morning, everyone. It is 5.30 in the morning on September 14th, 2019. Yesterday was uh, Friday the 13th. Mm, unlucky day for some. But for us, it wasn't... To, uh, yesterday was actually very nice because we got to listen to the Bayer Dynamic T1 second gen, and it sounds like a very good pair of headphones. Very relaxing, uh, very un Dynamic in many ways. Today, we are taking a look at the T1s again, and we are going to test the mid-frequencies. The vocals, really, is what we're talking about. But before we get there, let's take a quick gander at what, what Hi-Fi says about the T1 second gen. And uh, tell me if this makes any sense to you. They say, quote, Once they stabilize, these headphones take the insightful yet entertaining sound of the originals and add extra doses of resolution, transparency, and low-end weight. All the while, we still have a firm grasp of rhythmic information and the kind of fluid dynamics we rarely hear from headphones, even top-end models. Fluid dynamics sounds a lot like uh, a mechanic telling you that your brakes are probably due for an upgrade. And I don't know what fluid dynamic means. I, I have no idea what, what, hi, what hi-fi is talking about. Other than to say that they are still stuck in the audiophile bullshit lingo and can't get out of it. They just can't help themselves. I, I just... Ugh. Which is why their reviews and almost every hi-fi review of any hi-fi product is completely worthless. Because they don't tell you anything. But that's the opposite of what we do. We tell you what we hear. So we have three songs queued up. Watch You Back by Haim. Superposition by Young the Giant. And Why Am I Like This by Orla Gartland. Let's start off with Watch You Back. As before, our headphones are plugged into the 789 from Mastrob, which is itself being fed from the SMSL SU8 as a balanced DAC. The amplifier is set at number three high gain, and uh, the, currently the volume level is set at about 11 o'clock. And let's see if we need to increase the power at all. Here we go. Nope. At 11 o'clock, it's very loud. One thing I do notice is that uh, around eight seconds of this song, when she says we were, and that word we, the letter W, she drags out, and it's always very visceral, that W, we, we. It didn't come off as visceral to me on the T1. I could hear the, the graveliness in her voice, but it was more muted. Her voice, however, sounds smooth. Very natural, open, airy. I could hear the backup vocalist in the background. Left or right. Although, the backup vocalist tonalities are not easily separated. So what I mean by that is, the primary vocalist is clear, airy, very natural and smooth. I could hear the backup vocalist, but... There's two of them, and you should be able to separate their different tonalities throughout the song. Unfortunately, we are a minute and 16 seconds into the song. I have yet to hear the T1 separate those bag of vocalists so I could hear their individual tonalities at the same time. Now, at 1 minute and 29 seconds, I can. The, the mixed in... And you can hear one in the left, one in the right, different tonalities. However, when the entire mix is playing, the guitar, the piano, the drum, uh, all three vocalists, the problem is, is that the back of vocalists just kind of get lost and their separate tonalities basically meld into one. Now, you may say that's just how it's mixed. Not really, because I have, in fact, heard with other headphones a continual separation of those backup vocalists. I think the 800S has that separation. We have had uh, some Odyssey headphones that have also uh, been able to separate the, the tonalities. But the 
T1 simply melds that in when you have so much going on. And well, let's be honest, not a whole lot going on. It's only a handful of instruments. Smooth, so I mean, very smooth sound signature. So you know, I'm 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 sitting here and I'm listening to it. And I'm going, well, this is really enjoyable. The guy, this is this is the perfect amount of smooth. Okay, so he, here's what I mean. There are headphones that will smooth out everything, and it's like butter slick smooth, and it's just so nice to listen to, so soothing, and yet you know at the back of your mind that that is all fake. It's not really how the music is supposed to sound, okay? I'll give you an example. The ZMF Icon is the smoothest, smoothest sounding headphone I have ever heard, and because of some of that smoothness, the detail is lost. And on top of that, it doesn't really sound natural because of, of the smooth veneer. On the other hand, there, there are really intense headphones um, that will give you hyper detail and ear piercing. Like, you know, 800S can do that. The 800 definitely. The 700 can. Uh, the Bayer Dynamic 1990 can. The 1770 absolutely will, no matter you know what you're listening to. You could be listening to a... A pillow. You can be listening to a pillow falling on top of a fluffy cat, and it would still somehow manage to murder your ears. I don't know how. The T1s, however, they have a smoothness, and yet there's still plenty of air and energy, so that smoothness doesn't make the sound signature fake. I mean, it's so vague. I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I just talked about what hi-fi being fake, and here I am being vague again. When you put on the T1s and you listen to a song like Want You Back, no harshness, no peakiness, no treble uh, energy that is going to hurt your ears. We are at 11 o'clock on the 789, which is very loud. Now, yesterday, we were at 1 o'clock on the 789 listening to bass songs. And now you know. So there is, in fact, a difference in tonality. So the bass needs to be boosted. And in order to boost it, you got to crank up the, the volume. The mids, I'm happy leaving at 11 o'clock with this song at least, right? And I can get loud, I mean, really loud music. I wouldn't I wouldn't sit around listening to this song on these headphones any louder than what it is at right now. I can get some of that detail. The the W that's being stretched out, it's gravelly, right? Around eight seconds of this song. I can hear it, but there's a smoothness to it, just a bit of smoothness that isn't quite the same as it, it it has been represented on other headphones with no shiny veneer. The rest of the song, however, smooth, not, no peakiness, nothing. The, the only downside that I can say about this song is that the backup vocalists, they meld a little bit too much. There are portions of the song where they come out really well. Like they're separated, you can hear the different tonalities, and when you can hear them separated, they are definitely different. And it's a very nice experience to hear one tonality on the left ear, ear, ear cup and a completely different tonality on the right ear cup. It's a very cool experience. However, uh, when those portions of the song where you have the guitar, the piano, the drum, the primary vocalist, and the backup vocalist, everything is playing, the backup vocalists tend to meld, and their two different tonalities turn into one. Now, maybe that's something you like, maybe it's not, that's totally up to you, but if you're looking for hyper detail, I, I don't think that the T1s are really the, the type of headphone for that, right? Not for hyper detail, not for hyper separation. Okay, so now let's go to Superposition by Young the Giant. Here we go. Again, 11 o'clock on the 789, plenty loud for me. There's like this banjo ukulele thing, whatever it is, that starts off this song. It could get really high and uh, piercing on some headphones, like the 1990 and the 1770. But... On this, smooth as silk. I mean, really well controlled. But it's not like that energy is suppressed. It's just that it's not as peaky. It's just the perfect amount. And this is male vocalist. And he's very natural sounding. 
very clear. Now you can hear all that energy at the treble frequency as he's singing, but it's not peaky. It's so airy and light and fluffy, like a fluffy cat. That And when I say airy and light and fluffy, what I mean is there's a lot of soundstage here. There's so much width and air in the presentation that it feels like you're sitting outside in a, in a big field and you have amazing speakers pointing towards you and you're watching these, uh, this band sing. And it, you have all of that experience, like a big spaciousness compared to putting on something that's claustrophobic sounding, more closed off, uh, and feeling as if you're constrained inside a room and listening to it on your hi-fi setup. It's a b very different experiences. But I can say that very airy with the soundstage to boot. I, I would, if I had to bring down, if I had to tell you what type of soundstage this is, I would say it's above average. It's not the widest I've heard, like the 800S, the widest soundstage I've heard so far. This is probably a couple of steps behind that easily. But it's not average. It's definitely above average soundstage. No sibilance at all. Very smooth. With the backup vocalist, you could hear that there's more than one, probably two. But beyond that, I can't tell. The other thing I can't tell is the different tonalities of those backup vocalists when they're all singing together. And that especially happens when uh, everything in the mix is playing. So here's what here's what I can say. It's it's an interesting uh, experience. There are a lot of consistencies between Watch Back and Superposition. One of the consistencies is smooth, yet still having that energy. And and when I say energy, I mean that treble energy. It's still there, but it's not, it doesn't get peaky, doesn't get harsh. I think what's going on in and the impression. The reason I'm getting that impression is that there is plenty of air in this song, plenty of air and, and width in the presentation that it makes me feel as if there is indeed substance there. It's not thinned out. It doesn't sound anemic like the like the bass sounds anemic on the Acro L1000, for example. On the T1, you listen to the vocals and they don't sound claustrophobic they don't sound like they're you guys are stuck in a very small room and you're you're in a jazz lounge and it's you know smoke everywhere that's not the impression i get i get the impression that you're sitting outside at a concert and you're sitting at like five six ten rows back right you're a comfortable distance back and you've got amazing speakers like the best loudspeakers money can buy and they're pointed right at you right nobody else is getting the experience you're getting that experience and you have all that air and the and the loudspeakers are playing and those loudspeakers and the music and the sound that's coming through has the, the chance to, to dissipate before it gets to you because you're 10 rows back and you're in this open field. Perfect, right? That's the perfect experience. You're getting just the right amount of energy for you and you're carrying as much detail as you possibly can. Now, that's the type of experience that the T1 presents. On the other hand, when I say that there's... Oh, sorry, hit, hit the microphone. On the other hand, even though I say there's a, uh, a lot of detail, right? As much detail as you can, you're still missing stuff. And the stuff that you're missing is also consistent with Want You Back. Is when everything is playing in a mix and you have backup vocalists, the backup vocalist tonality melts and it sounds more like one than two or three. And if you're looking for hyper detail, if you're looking for that extreme separation at all points of this, of any song, then the T1 is likely not going to satisfy you. It, it provides a separation only when all the instruments are muted or there's only one or two instruments plus the vocalist. Then it can separate the tonalities. And if, if that's something you're looking for, then the T1 has is presenting itself not to be that type of headphone. It's not the type of headphone that is going to give you the uber detail like an 800S or an 800 uh, or an XC from Odyssey. I just don't feel as if that's going to, to, um, to happen. 
All right, so let's go to Why Am I Like This by Orla Gartland. This is more of an acoustic song. There's a guitar, and then there's just her. She has a beautiful voice, very nice song. If you have a chance, take a, li- take a listen. Listen to it, not take a li- Maybe take a listen. Take a listen. Here we go. That, that guitar is just smooth, airy, but it still has that reverberation, the, the, the idea that it has substance. There's still a reverberation, just a light reverberation in the guitar frequency that makes you think that even though there's a lot of air, there's still substance to the song. Her voice is amazing not peaky not harsh there's there's this hint of energy in the treble frequency for her because she can get really sibilant just the way that she sings and the headphones don't let it happen but it's not as if i feel like that the treble is just cut off no trouble for you right it's like the soup nazi from not uh, from seinfeld no soup for you no trouble for you that's not what that the t1 is doing it's just very artfully curved off that higher frequency, that treble, keeping the the air and and just letting you hear the energy without it piercing your ear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Voice is smooth. In fact, what you can do you can do is you can hear a slight tonal difference in her voice as she's moving around. So when you're facing a microphone, like I am right now, and you're talking into the microphone, if it's dead center, you should be able to hear the stereo effect, left and right, same thing. But if I start moving around, like you know, if I move over here, or if I come back to the center and I move over to the other side, right, you should be able to tell that my, my tone changes a little bit. And you could hear that in these headphones. As she's sitting there, playing the guitar, and she moves just a little bit, moves your head just a little bit so it's off-center from the microphone, that tonality shifts, and I hear it in this song. It doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, I can hear it. In fact, if you, if you watch the music video for, for this song, you can see her just sitting there on a bench playing, and you can understand like why that would happen as she's shifting a little bit on the, the seat how that tonal shift will come, why it would be there, because she is, in fact, moving every once in a while. And you have backup vocalists now, very smooth. And I can't say if it's more than one, definitely one, obviously. Very smooth sounding. So for this song, again, it's just, it's an amazing experience for, for mids. Her voice, very energetic without getting trebly, without uh, getting um, ear piercing. Plenty of air in the song. Good soundstage, excellent soundstage, so you can hear left and right. Good detail retrieval in the sense that you can hear the slight tonal shifts left and right as she unbeknownst to her, moves a little bit as she's singing. And the headphones really do transfer that. Um, now, you may say, how come you can pick that up, but you can't pick up some of the details in Want You Back or Superposition, the different tonalities in the backup vocalist? Well, part of the reason is the complexity, relatively com- more complex, those songs compared to uh, why, why Am I Like This? Here's what I mean. Why Am I Like This, for the most part, I would say 80 to 90% of the song is acoustic guitar and her voice and maybe a piano, maybe, coming in very lightly. Whereas the other songs we listen to, you have the, the primary vocalist, the backup vocalist, you have guitar, electric guitar, drum, piano. So that's a much more complex uh, mix than Why Am I Like This? <clears throat> and so for Why Am I Like This, you can actually start picking up the details because there are fewer things interfering with 
uh, the representation of the music. There are fewer frequencies, fewer instruments that will distract you or meld with other portions of the mix. Does that kind of make sense? So that's why I would think that I'm picking out some of that detail in Why Am I Like This, whereas I couldn't pick out some of the detail in the other two songs. And obviously they're two vastly different songs, right? Why Am I Like This is not the same as Want You Back and Superposition. But I would say Superposition and Want You Back are very similar in in the sense that they're pop. They have a very similar type of instrument use. And frankly, they're basically the same genre, right? They are the same, same genre. Okay, so let's talk about conclusion. I think that the T1 is an amazing headphone for mint. I, I just, I am very happily surprised by how well that they, they have done with the 789, which is THX, neutral, and un, uncolored, and f- basically noiseless. And what we do is we try to find out when we have this this type of setup with such an amp DAC combo, is whether the headphone is representing the music accurately. The answer is no. The T1 is not representing the music accurately. And here's why. It's coloring it. It's adding a smoothness that really isn't present in these songs. But that smoothness is so well done It's not overbearing that you can sit there and listen to the song, enjoy it without ever worrying that you're missing out on the substance of the song. Now, there are details you will miss out on, but the substance of the song, I think, will carry across really well because very airy, better than average soundstage. It's got um, the, the smoothing effect, but it's not overly done meaning the treble energy is still present. It's rolled off, and you know that it's not going to get trebly at the volume that we're going for, right? If you crank up the volume to 2 o'clock or something on the 789, you might, but you may also destroy your eardrums. It'll just get way too loud. Uh, And on top of that, even though that there's this airiness, even though that there is a rolled-off treble frequency, there still seems to be substance. It's not an anemic sound signature. It's not, you know, so light and thin and paper thin that it feels like you're not listening to the song. And the reason I think that uh, it still has substance is because, I'll give you an example. When you have an acoustic guitar, like in Why Am I Like This? It's playing. If it was anemic, then you wouldn't hear the reverberation. It would be really muted and flat and uncolored, and it would just... I, I, it would sound as if you have a, a guitar and then there's a brick wall between you and the guitar and you're basically hearing something on the other side of this brick wall. But that's not what the T1 does. The T1 allows for the reverberation, the natural reverberation. It's not boosted. If I, if you turn up the volume, you'll probably get more of it. But you hear it. And because of there is that continuing reverberation of that acoustic guitar, it sounds like it is, in fact, an acoustic guitar, right? It doesn't sound anemic. It doesn't sound as if it's flat. It doesn't sound as if there's nothing there. You know it's a guitar because of that reverberation, and it carries through when the vocalists start. That's why I say there is substance. Now, when we when we use all these terms, these are, I'm afraid language is not very good in describing sound, but this is the best that I can do at this point. I would say that if you're looking for a pair of headphones that is going to serve you well for mids, if you love to listen to vocal-centric songs and you love to have a, a, an airy presentation, then the T1 is an excellent choice. It's not airy like an 800S, I would say it's closer to a 700 in, in, in the whole width and depth and airiness department without the treble, without the treble problems. If you crank up the volume, maybe you'll get treble problems, but you will also likely destroy your eardrums because you're pushing the headphones that loud. But for normal listening conditions at a very comfortable yet loud enough volume, 
I would say this is an amazing pair of headphones for mids. I hope that this has been helpful. I hope that anybody who has been interested in the T1 finds these review videos of the T1 uh, instructive, helpful, and things that you can use in order to make a logical, reasoned decision whether or not the T1 is the right headphone for you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. I, you know, I, every day I'm getting more subscription notification. That's fantastic. Now I have 414 subscribers and I could not be more thankful. Thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed. I have five very giving, wonderful patrons on Patreon and I would want to thank each and every one of them. So thank you so much, all of you, all five of you for sharing some of your hard-earned money with me once a month, every month. That is so generous of you. If you are not a patron, but you do watch my videos regularly, you do enjoy my content, then hey, maybe you'll consider donating a couple of bucks to me every month. Just a few bucks will help me a long way because that'll help me save up money and buy other gear that you're requesting that I can then review and give a thorough review. And that's the way I do it. I don't, I don't like begging companies for hand-me-downs. I, I don't do that. And I don't have relationships with other reviewers because I you know, harp on them so much. And so I would prefer to do an unbiased review by buying the product and then telling you what it sounds like. I hope that all of you have a wonderful weekend. It's Saturday. It's almost six o'clock. And I hope that you enjoy what is left of your weekend. I mean, it's just basically starting. Have a wonderful day. Take care. And I will talk to you soon.